Pest Now's Introduction to Attic Work, Certification 101. If you're in the pest industry, you're going to be working in an attic. This course will help you develop skills to navigate an attic and reduce injuries and damage. Most attics you think would look like this. Pretty easy to navigate. And in a pest industry, you're going to be required to work in an attic for several different reasons. Whether you're doing animal control or doing tap insulation, maybe getting a bee's nest out. Uh, any number of reasons a pest control tech would be required to enter an attic. However, an attic is not your normal area of workplace. An attic can be very dangerous, as you'll see in this video, and hence you should be trained to work in an attic. Starting now, any TAP crew member will have to be certified and tapped in or an attic. There'll be a requirement set forth for it. Also, part of the new hard training for PEST now will be what we call uh, introduction to uh, safe attic work, which this course will take care of. But anyway, when you envision an attic, maybe in a new house, you're probably looking at something like this, but that's not the way they look. Also, in an attic, regardless of what shape it's in, the hidden dangers are just that they're hidden under that insulation either in bat insulation which is laid out or either blown insulation and sometimes just junk and debris in the attic uh, and also this picture may be misleading because it's pretty like daylight there unless somebody's cut the top off the roof attics are the very dark dangerous places that's why you need to be trained underneath that labyrinth of insulation lays a number of uh, wooden members that you need to know the name of and also know when they build an attic they don't build it to walk in some attics will have walkways what we call catwalks and others will just be like this so working in them is extremely dangerous if you don't know where to put your foot underneath that what the rafters and the uh, uh, roof joists are setting on is nothing but three quarter inch uh, drywall and of course it will hold no weight also, you can't trust the wooden members that you're stepping on unless you know a little more about them, which we're going to go into now. This is an actual photograph I took off the internet of an advertisement of a tap crew or an insulation crew uh, removing insulation. Uh, we'll go over to three points of access, and it's clear it looks like he has three points of access, but I can tell you that is a problem. Things happen in an attic. You put your foot in the wrong place, your arm in the wrong place. Um, and you're in this situation here where you're punching holes in that uh, drywall and you fall through. And this happens way too much. Not only is it a risk to the employee, it's a risk to anyone in the house below it. And it's also uh, extreme damage. All of a sudden that tap job, insulation job or pest control job you were working on just got compounded by a gazillion dollars and loss of confidence in the company, lawsuits, you name it. This is an actual footage of someone working in an attic. Yep, right on surveillance came. And I can tell you right now, this has happened to us. We had one, I call it the five rule, it's hard to believe. We had one individual that stepped through the same house ceiling five separate times in five rooms. Yep, you can't make this stuff up. Fortunately, there were no injuries to the individual, but there were certainly a lot of injuries to the confidence of the company. I mean, how do you do that? How does someone, well, you know why? He had been with a company for less than three weeks stuck him in an attic and expect him to know how to navigate it. It happens. That's management situation that we're correcting now with this training video. We don't want this. And unfortunately, can you imagine that five times in one house? Well, it happens a lot. And that's because we are putting people and, and, and even the homeowners don't navigate it. No one goes in these dark places. They're dangerous. And what happens if there's an injury? There's serious injuries when you fall out of an attic. For one, that's just one of the things that can happen to you in an attic. And of course, we don't want personal injury to any employee or anyone that works for us or any of our customers. Also in an attic, there's hidden things like bees nest. If you're working in an attic, it's dark, you don't see what you're up against, and you run up against this. Animals love to be in attics. When that happens, it's not a good thing. You're coming out of there with a raccoon on your head or a possum crawling up your leg or bats. These and again, these are not well lighted areas. So what you're going up against, if you know, if a raccoon's on your head, you you're coming out of that attic one way or the other. Uh, and bees the same way. So you really have to know the terrain before you get into it. This is a typical attic entrance, a push up door. This is what we see most of the time. And they are different. We'll go over them. There's other different types of attic entrances. This is probably the most dangerous and the most vulnerable because 
you push it up, push up the attic. It's usually your ceilings are what uh, eight to ten feet tall, some of them taller. And it's, if you're using a six foot ladder, which is illegal, it doesn't give you enough room to get up in there. And that framing around that attic door is very fragile. What happens is people put their feet on it. Even a hose being drawn up it for the uh, vacuum will break it off. It happens a lot, resulting on damages. It's very unstable. Uh, and when you, even if you put your ladder against it, it could break. That's just a minor damage. And this is a result of an attic entrance being damaged by simply putting your foot on it. That's just part of it. It's minor compared to the other things that can happen to you in an attic. This is a situation where the entire frame came off. And if you can see the inspector, if you look down below, there's a ladder standing there. And it's not long enough to get himself an attic. The, the, you would have to stand on the top rung, which is illegal, on that ladder to enter the attic. It's an OSHA violation. It's a company violation. It is a dangerous situation. This is another situation where it's even a taller ceiling. And even though he has a larger ladder, it is still illegal. You can see that to enter the attic, he would still have to get on the top rung of the ladder and pull himself up into it. We create our own problems. We create our own injuries. We create our own damage. And it's just something that can't happen. This is illegal for our company. It's non-protocol. You cannot use this type of ladder to enter an attic, no matter what job you have with us from inspector to technician. This is the type of ladder that most of our inspectors are using. The other technicians are using a, a, a ladders, but they're not going to be the type that you can, uh, you'll have to pull yourself up into. It will have to extend up into the attic. This telescopic ladder extends up into the attic so that the inspector can get in there safely. This is what I call the porcupine of death. When you're in an attic, you don't realize it, but the roofers sink those nails in all the way through the plywood and when you stand up in the attic, your head comes in contact with that. And remember, it's dark. It's not lit like this. And you have serious injuries if you're not prepared to work in an attic with this. And almost all attics have this. A lot of the attics are too low. And you have to stoop over. And once you, something happens, you bend up, you wind up like these Frankenstein-looking guys. And uh, that's, not a, that's not a good feeling. You got puncture wounds to the head. You're bleeding. You come down out of the attic and... Uh, Looks like you've been attacked by some type of monster up there. Well, not that monster. They do make bump caps. This is a fancy one, but you can use construction hats. The thing with bump caps that I have a problem with is if you get one, and I do recommend you use a bump cap uh, to prevent head injuries, is one that straps down. Because remember, you're bending over, and if you got a hat that's not secured to your head, might as well not be there at all because it's going to fall off your head possibly puncture through the ceiling and if one you're grabbing at it you're going to lose your three points of contact and probably fall through the ceiling anyway this might be one of my favorite parts because this depicts how an attic actually looks when you poke your head up in it remember they're not lighted some have light switches you can turn on but most of them you have to generate your own light especially if you're working so for an inspector if you're a technician, you're bringing your lights with you, but for an inspector, all you've got is a flashlight. So when you look into an attic and you see that, if it doesn't have a louver at the other end, there's no light coming at all except for the light that you're coming from you when you're coming up into the attic. So I recommend everyone to bring some type of flashlight. I like working in attics headlamps because you have both hands free, that you can maintain three points of contact. And sometimes you'll see something glaring back at you, such as that eyeball right there. And this has happened to me many times in crawl spaces and in attics. And once the lights go on, you got your little furry critter there telling you, welcome to his house. Unfortunately, he's got or she's got young in there, and she's prepared to defend those young and her living space to the death. That's not a good feeling. Many, many times we've been run out of crawl spaces and attics by these lovely little creatures that just love to attack you. Remember, this is how a crawl space we think looks. It is not. What is under it is just what we showed you before, and it's a labyrinth, mandatory. When you're working in an attic, you are to carry these. There, this is a brand name that you can get or a company can provide, but you cannot work in an attic without some type of joist mate. These extend over the the floor, the roof joist, so that you can have a working platform. 
If you're working in an attic, trying to navigate it by stepping on the uh, roof joist, hanging onto the rafters, you're you're already in violation. This is a protocol mandatory requirement to work in an attic for any type of technician work inside an attic. If something happens and this isn't in there, it's on you, subject to be released from the company and also pay for the damages. This is an example of a technician, unlike the one I showed you earlier, that was actually on an advertisement. I don't know why they would advertise that. This guy's working on, a, it's the same thing as a, a joist mate. It's just the plywood that he's able to bring up and it spreads the weight out which prevents a lot of nail pops and prevents you from falling through. It's a safe, stable platform. I would prefer it be a little longer uh, for the simple reason that uh, that's a little shaky right there to me. But anyway, he's doing everything the right way. Safety first. Always use safety first. It doesn't matter what a job costs or how much profit if someone gets hurt or it's damage involved in it. Remember, this is that joker from the first advertisement. And as you can see, whatever company is in this other one, um, I'd like for it to be us, and I hope our people are doing this. But he's got all the proper equipment on, and he's using a joist mate. This is what happens when you don't. It happens every month, and there's no excuse for it. There's no way that technicians are using a joist mate and falling through as many ceilings as we are. Nope, safety first. That's just, I, I, we just can't do it. These are problems that we have in addicts, and I want to point them out to you. Because if you think you're safe walking on these joists, carpenters are notorious short cutters. Here's what happens. That insulation is laid over this wooden structure that you think is stable that you can walk on. And as you push the insulation out of your way and you look, but I want you to notice certain things. You see that two before right there that the arrow's pointing to? That's it. It's not nailed down. It's nailed on the joist, but if you step on that one end, and remember insulation would be covering it till you couldn't see the other end, then you're going through that part of the ceiling. It happens. Now you understand a little bit why we fall through ceilings. This is another example. Do you see how that two before is attached to the rafter? Well, it's not attached. It's butted up against the rafter. There's no nails in it. It's just sitting there. So your false sense of security puts a foot on that. You're going through the attic. Now, this, you would think, well, why would they do that? Well, who knows and who cares? It's, the fact is they do it. And you cannot trust it unless you can see that. That's why your joist mates are so valuable. Here's another situation. This one is not even butted up against a rafter. It's just stuck out there. This is a clear trap. These are like booby traps in the attic. And they're just waiting for And, and then you think, well, now I see why someone fell through the roof so many times. So you got to be careful. This is a little ambiguous. But if you look, you'll notice that notch right there. And there's a crack on it you can't see. But and it's 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 across the rafters. I mean the joist. So you think you can walk on it, but the problem is, you it's hard to see in this photo. But there's a crack all the way through that wood. If you step on that damage too before, even though it looks secured, you're going through the ceiling. These are other situations where they just put a spacer in between the joist. It's not even nailed. But if you were just working insulation, hadn't cleared it off well enough, and were aware that construction workers do this, you're stepping on it and you're going through the ceiling. These are things that I understand now how this happens and why this training is so essential. Safety gear to work in an attic. Remember, insulation is not good for your lungs. It's not good for your skin. It's not good for anything. And you've been working it, you're removing it and putting it back. Minimum safety gear. You're gonna to have to be smart about this. Tie back suits to include the hood. A, an N95 respirator I mean, a mask is, is the least that you can get away with, but you have to keep that from going into your lungs. Remember, you're also dealing with mice, and also there's mice droppings up there. The attics are nasty places. You have to wear some protection. It's essential to use safety clothing for any project in an attic. Before attempting any project yourself, which would be for us, with a hooded protective coveralls or Tyvek suit, long pants, shoes, and actually sneakers are the best. I know we want you to wear boots, but to be honest with you, if you're gonna work in an attic, Sneakers, tennis shoes, and workout shoes are better because you're like walking a tightrope up there. I don't want you in some steel-toed boots up there trying to navigate it like some jackboot in a, a war story. Go ahead and wear what's going to make you be able to navigate it. If I was a technician, I would keep shoes that I can work an attic in. 
But remember, you can't apply pesticides without with canvas shoes because it's going to absorb through it. So you get your leather shoes, which are leather workout shoes or tennis shoes. They make them in leather and use them. Wear a respirator. A disposable N95 respirator is the minimum protection you need for any airborne fibers in the attic. If you suspect rodents are present, especially deer mice in rural homes, be more sophisticated with it. Actually, there's this point, uh, some training films we've used where we've actually misted and, and sprayed the area down slightly, not wet it, but just missed it, so to keep the particles from being airborne. Enough light. I can't tell you how many times that we have situations where you just can't navigate an area, a crawl space, you're not going to fall through a crawl space, but you still need light in there. Addicts 100% need lighting, and if you do sometimes have a light switch there, it's poor lighting. Carry your own lighting with you. Portable lighting to work in an attic is essential, but it's also judgmental because you have to hook it up to electricity. You're going to be pulling cords. Uh, and also, if you're using some type of flashlight, there again, you, you've lost one of your hands, ability to have three-point contact and uh, actually work with the hose and everything else you're doing up there, whatever type of treatment you're applying. So you need a light. I like the, I like the headlamps that you strap on your head. There's some great ones out there. No way I'd work in an attic without one. Provide enough light to keep your hands free. This is a typical portal, portable light. The thing I would advise against portable lights, make sure it's set in on a hard wooden surface and no paper. Now, these things generate a lot of heat and you can burn a house down if you put that light up there, forget about it, or put it against some combustible material like paper. Be careful. Bump caps, I already told you about them, and the headlamp. Headlamp's essential. I mean, I, I have them at my workshop to do any type of work because it gives both hands free. Stairs. A lot of these attics will have access and either stairs or pull down access. Do not trust them. Inspect them before you use them. Most people and their homeowners, the, the homes are older, they're carrying stuff up and they're storing stuff in the attic. They're usually putting more weight on them than they should. And some of those uh, staircases that they pull down, the weight limit on is less than 200 pounds. And need I say that a lot of you guys, including myself, are a lot more than 200 pounds. So, ladies, you're not. You're nice and trim, so I'm not going to cut your weight on that. But no matter what your weight is or your gender, inspect the attic stairs and ladder before you get on it. That's an example of one that's already been broke. You step on that, you're going to break it. And guess what? Whether you get hurt or not, it doesn't matter. The It matters, trust me. It matters if you get hurt. But what matters is that homeowner is going to make you pay for any damages anyway. Well, you got your lug, leg cut off. He's still going to look at his property or her property first. This is another situation. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that. And, and people will pull that down and say, okay, it's good to get on it. No, <laughs> no, I'm not using that. I'm going to get hurt or the company's going to get hurt. And we're going to wind up paying for a ladder or hospital damages. Flooring. Be wary. Drywall and plaster that look like floors. Sometimes these, the attics will have flooring that looks great. You think you can walk on it. Unless you're 100% sure, you cannot step on that surface. There again, going to fall through the ceiling. And like I said, this is, the video was generated because we took a look at uh, just a single month and looked at all the attics that we'd stuck our foot through or fell through, and it became a no-brainer. Why aren't we training on this? So here you go. We're training on it. I hope we can reduce these incidents. I hope you will take advantage of this training. Faulty wiring. Guys, if you're working in an attic, a good chance you're in that attic because of rodent work. We're replacing it because of rodent contamination. We're replacing it because raccoons or other wildlife have been in the attic. What do rodents and wildlife do? They chew on wires. Once they've chewed through a wire, and it becomes uh, active, You that loose wire, if it hits any type of, it could electrocute you, number one. Number two, it could burn the house down. Be careful. Notice the wiring. If you notice that the wiring is damaged, stop the job. Have the owner notify a electrician before you proceed. This could be a situation where you could get injured or you could burn the house down. Now, if we're doing a job and it's winter, and this becomes an emergency situation then, because you have to worry about freezing in an attic. They have water lines up there. So you as, an as a technician doing the work, inspectors don't have to worry about it too much, but in uh, technicians do. You have to be aware of these types of situations so you can prevent injury or burning the house down, which I have been to a house that was burned down 
due to insulation and attic work where the cause was not determined, but the insulation work was done the day before. House burnt down that night. We, the company was in there for rodent work. You know, do the math. So I'm just telling you, these things happen. Luckily, nobody was injured. The house was unoccupied. This is a type of attic and the construction that you'll see when everything is out, which you'll never see because we don't do new construction before insulation is worked. You may see it once all the insulation is taken out, but you won't see it before you go in. You should know the names of these things. They may be on your test, just saying, but you should know what you can step on, what you can use to brace yourself with, and be aware of false construction where they've just stuck spaces in there and didn't nail them down. Could save your life. This is how we typically see attics. This is what you, the technician inspector, are faced with. And when you go in there, do you see all that plumbing, all that piping, all that electrical? A lot of times it will be in this situation, but it would be covered over with old insulation. So wherever you step, you have the possibility of not only stepping on faulty wiring, but you also, and this happens, have the ability of stepping on the condensation line from a, a, an air conditioner in the attic or a, a HVAC or either just a sprinkler system in the attic. And when you do that, it's all going to hell because the water's going to weight down everything in there and bring it down. These are really dangerous. This is recessed lighting. There's code that you have to follow putting insulation in it, but with a cap, it's got to be capped over. But there's other videos that will show you this. This is not trained on how to install a tap. This is showing you the hazards of it. You can see what looks like a water line, a condensation line running right over it. And you can see the recessed lighting there. That recessed lighting gets extremely hot. If there's frayed wires there, if you, it has to be capped. Be careful of those things because a lot of times the rodents have already chewed them in two. That's what happens when you step on a condensation line and also a sprinkler system line. And a lot of times the, the leak isn't discovered until you've already left the job. And then we're getting a call that we have flooded the man's or the lady's ceiling and it all fell down. Protruding items. Watch out for sharp edges, nails, not just the roofing nails, but a lot of times they'll use uh, this type of metal wrap it with the, uh, putting in the HVAC systems, extremely sharp. It can give you serious lacerations. Remember, old Frankenstein there. Hazardous, mater hazardous material. I don't, I find a lot of mildew in attics. I haven't been to one where I've seen a lot of mold growth, but what I am wary of in these older homes is asbestos and vermiculite. This is vermiculite. It's in some of your older homes in DC and Arlington. If you see this type of insulation, stop, get out of the attic, have it identified. If it is vermiculite, we are not touching it. We're not working in that attic. That's a known carcinogenic product and extremely dangerous. If it's in there and not disturbed, I've heard it's okay, but we're not going to disturb it. We're not going to unload it. It's a hazardous material. And this is what we're going to reiterate. I said three points of access earlier in the film. It is three points of contact. You must travel from stable flooring to a joist or either you, most of all using your joist mate with three points of contact. If you've got a flashlight or a tube in your hand that you're using to uh, expel insulation or extract it, uh, you're very limited. And remember, you have to have three points of contact. The joist mate and those platforms are mandatory. They're protocol. They're essential. Do not be in an attic working it if you don't have it. Before you start any attic work, this is important. Walk the entire low level inspecting the ceiling before anyone enters the attic because a lot of ceilings are already damaged. If you don't walk and look for cracks or nail pops and point it out to the homeowner, then you will be accused of doing it. Also, you may walk a, a ceiling before you enter the attic and determine that the attic may be unsafe to even get in. Photo and record. Bring attention to any existing ceiling cracks or nail pops. This is mandatory. It is protocol before you start working an attic. Look for any indication that the ceiling is damaged, bowed, or compromised, or wet spots. A lot of times you're dealing with animals, you'll see a big wet spot up in there. That wetness will compromise that drywall, so be very careful in that area. The, that photo that just popped up is an existing crack of a house that we were beginning to put insulation in. They walked the floors, I mean the, the ceiling, inspected it before they did it and found that had any insulation been put on there, we would have collapsed that ceiling. Ex inspect the access 
either the drop down attic stairs and or the steps and make sure there's no damage to it before you start walking up them. This is an actual photo of a collapsed ceiling that had a crack in it that we didn't know about it. Put the insulation in, the extra weight collapsed the entire thing. There's actually a baby crib underneath that. It was unoccupied, the house was unoccupied when we did the treatment, but needless to say that the calamity and the catastrophe that could have been. Walk the area before you work it. Inspect the attic entrance. Is it weak, damaged, or compromised? It needs to be noted and pointed out to the homeowner, also for your safety. Inspect the attic and photograph it before work. Once you start your work for tap, mainly, photograph the attic before you do any work. And then photograph it when it's cleared out and photograph the finished product. Can you actually work the attic? This is an actual job that we went to to do an attic job. You tell me how any of our inspectors, not inspectors, how any of our technicians could get in that attic and work it. This is an attic we do not work. There's no way we're going to pull all that stuff out. They want to clean that attic out, we'll do it. Don't even attempt a job like this. Don't sell it. Don't work it. Don't propose it. Starting the job. These are all important stuff. I'd pay real attention to it. Attic work and insulation removal and adding anything to that attic or taking it out is dirty. Prep that area you're going to be working in before you start to work it. Put poly down on the floors. Remember, this is fiber stuff. Tell the homeowners to cut the air conditioner and the heat off while you're working and an hour after you've completed it to reduce flow through the heating and air conditioning system because it will blow fibers everywhere. Use poly to protect the floor and the entrance area and the way you come in. Make sure you've got your protective shoes on or uh, sneakers on and make sure that you're walking on the protected area. Make sure to use that the wind, sometimes we'll use the window, an open window to pull the hose through. When you do that, make sure you put towels down or something to protect the window sill from damage. I have seen them broke completely off and almost always they chip the paint and ruin the paint job on it. Be smarter than that. Treat it like it's your house. Prepare all your lighting and boards before you go in that attic. If you're taking up uh, temp uh, temporary lighting, work lighting, what you're going to do if you're working it, make sure that the cords and the material that you're bringing up for that lighting and the lighting itself is put in a safe place that you can work. Make sure that you're properly equipped with the lighting that you can use, such as the headlamp. Make sure you use three points of contact at all times, even going up the ladder. Ventilate the attic with fans to reduce heat and know your limits. Some of these attics can get up to 120 degrees or higher during the summertime. You know your hydration needs. Make sure you hydrate. Make sure you take fans up and ventilate that area. And make sure when it, to know when it's too dangerous to work an attic. Notify the supervisors and put it on for early in the morning or later in the afternoon. Er, most attics should be worked in the morning, especially if it's attic work with tap insulation or insulation that we do. Completing the job. Going fast. If I you to take notes, you're going to see it. When the job is completed and the depth rulers are put in place for tap, we put depth rulers in. I want photographs of the finished product. Also, I want you to check the attic, I mean the lower levels again to make sure we have not created any damage. Check entire finished attic. Make sure no electrical lines or water lines have been damaged before you come out of that attic and a supervisor or your team leader should be the one doing it. When exterior or interior has been completed, clean the walk area completely, lower level. Photo the low level to make sure that we're not accused of damaging it. If we have damaged something, bring it to the owner's attention and we will address it and we will take care of it. Make sure the customer is happy and confident in pest now work. And if you have performed the work safely to prevent injury to yourself and your other workmates, make sure that you have recorded that. You are now ready for your final exam in attic safety. This is a very serious course. Do not take it lightly. Everyone will be required to take this course and pass it. If you do not watch the entire film and you fail this test, it will indicate it on our sensors and I will have a word with you. I want to protect you, I want to protect the homeowners, and I want to protect the company. Go forth and do good work.